Hi, hello everyone. I hope everyone's doing fine and having a great weekend. Before we begin, if you can all please confirm that you can hear me clearly and see the slides by just typing in yes in the chat window so I can receive the confirmation. Yeah. Great, I see many yeses coming up. Also, please feel free to introduce yourself, your name, position, company, and which country you belong to. It's really good to see an international audience of people from all the industries and backgrounds. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I welcome you all to today's webinar on introduction of reliability, availability, and maintainability analysis in an upstream exploration facility. My name is Sayyida Samir Aves, and I am the lead software engineer at Velocity. For the next two hours, it will be our pleasure to host this webinar for you. So this is our, this is our 61st webinar in a series of technical webinars. As a practice, we are conducting one webinar every second Sunday. So you can also follow us on LinkedIn and make sure to check our website to stay tuned to the latest updates. Furthermore, these webinars are also updated on our YouTube channel, which is Velocity. So you can search it on uh, YouTube and you can subscribe to our channel as well. So today we have quite an experienced panel of speakers for you guys. I'm with my colleagues, Mr. Ijazul Karim Rao. He's the Managing Director, Principal Integrity and Safety Consultant. Mr. Anthony James Williams, he's the General Manager, Global Sales. Mr. Muhammad Umair Moyuddin, he's the Integrity Engineer at Lossi. Uh, during this webinar, we encourage you all to keep asking in questions in order to clear any kind of doubts. Uh, this, will all note, this will not only help you, but also many others who can usually have the same kind of doubts. You can type in your queries using the Q&A window, and either you will receive a reply in the window or we'll answer it live. Uh, we'll try to answer as much questions as possible during this session. We would love to have your engagement on this topic. Furthermore, we'll also have a Q&A session in detail after the completion of this topic. Kindly accept our apologies if your question is not addressed. Due to the high volume of questions that we usually receive, we must be selective in this limited time. Furthermore, we'll also be issuing a participation certificate to all those who have attended at least 80% of this webinar and have participated in the discussions through Q&A session. Before we begin, although most of us uh, must, might be in the comfort of our home or some might be working uh, from the office, we should be aware of the emergency exits which are around us. With the given situation of COVID-19 and its emerging variants, we should be more careful, keep a safe distance, and in general, take care of our health and of those around us. So uh, today we are going to discuss about the case study. Uh, this is quite a technical object. We'll be touching the key theoretical and practical aspects of this topic in this limited time of two hours. We request you all to kindly follow along and keep asking questions to help us in make, making this as engaging as possible. Please note that the client name and data they have been redacted. We'll be following a practical approach where we'll walk you through the key steps through this case study. So to proceed with today's topic, I'll hand it over to Mr. Ijazul Kareem Rao. Thank you so much, everyone. Assalamu alaikum and good day everyone. Uh, we know that uh, people are attending this webinar from different uh, time zones from Asia to Africa and Africa to Europe and Americas. So it's our pleasure to continue this webinar series. So RAM uh, is a today's topic, which is reliability, availability and maintainability. Like uh, the people who are like uh, what we will be covering in today's uh, webinar is a basic theory and uh, we understand that in uh, two hours webinar we cannot uh, uh, make experts but we can share the basic knowledge and case study and it will give you a fair idea what is ram and how ram process works and uh, the kind of software we are using that would also be introduced and uh, the case study part would be presented by my colleague uh, mr umair and i will be presenting the theoretical part of it after completion of theoretical part, we will have a certain question answers session, and then there will be second question answer session at the end of the uh, session. Uh, in between, you can write your questions in the question answer window, not in the chat window, and we will try to answer them. So RAM, RAM means R for liability, A for availability, and M for maintainability. And uh, if you see theoretically, uh, reliability mean probability of successful operations after a period of time. This defines the frequency, uh, failure frequency, for example, MTBF, MTTR, MTTF. MTBF is mean time between failures, like when 
uh, an equipment or a machine failing when like a last time failure and after one year second time failure so this would be called mean time between failures would be one year mttf is a mean time to failure right and then uh, mttr mean time to repair like a time which is required for repair process availability generally definition is one minus probability of failure is called availability of the machine maintainability means like a the potential or the like a possibility of access for the machine operations for doing any preventive maintenance for doing any condition monitoring or how we would be maintaining the machine by timely condition monitoring for regular oil changes or if there would be any spare part required to be changed that is required to be changed and then in this process we wish to have the minimum downtime so in normal sense liability as a definition point of view uh, like if you see a is the availability r is the liability expressed in mean time between failures it could be in years it could be in hours similarly maintainability expressed as a mean time to repair mtt r which is a time to, to taken for the repair what the time taken to repair for example if a pump gets out of order and uh, technicians and the maintenance department is taking let's say uh, two days for that repair work so mttr for that pump would be called as two days similarly uh, regarding mtpf that is like as i said earlier that is mtpf and then availability means r is a basically mtp m ttf divided by r plus m m is a mttr if these two times we add it so we will get the availability of the equipment or the facility now <clears throat> when plant is operating operation and time wise this uh, my colleague was saying this uh, diagram is not giving that right picture what you can understand but you can see that fail point plant is operating operating state in the full and all of sudden it has gone to zero mean plant operation gone zero so two places if you can see uh, here this place there is one failure other place there is other failure this m is the mean time between failures right these two because up this up time this up time and this part is down time so from this equation like plant is working properly or equipment is working properly or pump is working properly or engine is working properly without any uh, issue and all of a sudden there is a trip to this part it goes to zero failed then this there is a time taken to repair then plant is up again and then there is second failure here so this would called mtt f mean time to failure and then time can be calculated as mtvf so mean time to failure measures the average amount of time a non repairable asset operates before it fails right this is called mean time to failure then mean time to failure equal the sum of the time to, uh, to failures divided by the total lifetime of all items during the period of interest and then next thing is like mttf also 1 over lambda lambda is a failure rate like how many time Uh, equipment is failing. Let's say five time a year or five time in ten years. So if we make one over lambda, that will become mean time to failure. So MTTR is the time, as I said earlier, like when a pump or a engine or a turbine goes down, and when the time taken by the technicians, uh, maintenance department, uh, bringing the like uh, spare parts, uh, getting the work permits. and getting the access to the machine scaffolding and then they would be opening the machine repairing it and back and bringing back to operation all that time which is required is normally called mtt or mean time to repair so in general terms like the what is the like ram point of view liability availability see i am repeating few things so as all of you can get familiar so i said in the beginning liability availability and maintainability ram analysis identify equipment whose failure affects the facility availability performance in terms of quantitative aspects like uh, 
like which parts of the machine uh, the, of the facility would be contributing more causing the downtime of the machine so if we can focus on the weak links if we can focus on bad actors if we can focus on the uh, component of the facility which are having higher failure rates or mtbf if we can change their design we can change uh, the nature of uh, their space which are being used or we can do more proactive uh, preventive condition monitoring and in this way we can increase uptime or reliability of the plant so the objective wise plant efficiency reliability levels are increased maximizing per Uh, product generation throughput can be increased then minimizing while doing ram study manning cost could be reduced if we can have proactive actions material cost could be saved maintenance workload could be reduced transportation and support cost could be reduced downtime affecting revenue and operating cost could be reduced and maintaining contractual nominations or agreements safety case requirements are less uh, like a safety threats uh, if the ram proper ram is done and the lesson learned are applied with the help of management so the benefit of ram same like as we said if uh, you want to increase the downtime sorry decrease the downtime and if you wish to increase the uh, basically uptime and uh, like a production uh, rates it will facilitate like identifying the bad actors as i said or sometime ram is done like two stages not sometime mostly i would say let's focus like if ram is done at a new project stage there is a one challenge if ram is done for the operating facility there is a, another kind of objective when we are doing ram at uh, epc stage or feed stage or conceptual stage so ram helps us to identify like whether you wish to have a one train with biggest capacity or you wish to have a two or three trains with lower capacities so in the scenario it helps you like if you have a one bigger capacity train of a compression or for a production or like would dehydration or self recovery unit point of view if you have only one train in that scenario if something goes wrong with that facility the whole production will go and the plant would be down but if you have a two or three trains with lower capacity in that scenario you would have a continuity of the production always similarly when you are putting intermediate equipments or the systems you can look at their reliability and you can make the cn like if we will have a more reliable equipment it will give lot better like uh, availability of the production and confidence for the market so the first part in the new project facilitate identification of the standby or redundant equipment identify equipment requiring preventive maintenance reduce downtime and maintenance cost due to better maintenance scheduling improve system productivity leading to higher overall profits increase safety and environmental performance Im improve resource utilization so there are many aspects which the ram can play and similarly after operation phase so we can identify which are the bad actors which are causing more uh, like operational disturbances or requiring more maintenance cost requiring more spares consuming more technician man hours so those equipment can be identified by the ram process uh, and then uh, focus can be given to minimize those aspects posture so here application point of view like uh, as i said earlier uh, one is on the project stage other one is operation stage and this like a diagram is mainly focusing on the operation phase like we can do failure analysis either qualitative or quantitative and we make rbd rbd is what reliability block diagram that would be explained like where the whole plant is made in the form of uh, pfd of the plant and then uh, their analysis is run by the calculations like uh, whether vivol analysis or exponential way and then analysis is run and then focus is given on the maintenance strategy optimization like a spare parts stocking policy optimization or like a process synthesis or retrofit or you may have to uh, remove adjust some machines or you may have to go some alternative philosophy so in normal ram analysis though we are using uh, exponential or vivol analysis but uh, in between 
whether uh, failure modes and effect analysis is being used, or we are using distribution parameter regression formula. And in that way, a more quantitative analysis are done and uh, qualitative analysis is used by FME CA approach. And generally, we are going by FME CA approach, which is uh, mostly built around mean time between failures. The maintenance data can be analyzed through uh, qualitative or quantitative approaches, and both approaches are as good as we can use. So now there are failure effects and uh, analysis point of view. There are three approaches. One, as I said earlier, uh, like it could be by a variable analysis or by exponential form. And below that, there could be event tree, fault tree analysis, or the block flow diagram. But generally, what we are using, or like DNV's Maro software and others, and we'll see one also. So we are using mostly the RBD approach. Other approaches can also be used. So this is the first one is event tree. It is like a normal saying, uh, there could be a two options, what is the option of first, what is the option of two, then each option further two, and then the probabilities. This is normally event tree analysis, or this is a fault tree where and or, or gate concept is applied. And this is a block flow diagram where each system and subsystem and component level, we try to identify uh, basically uh, failure rate. And as per those failure rates, uh, we make the analysis, like which are the major contributors uh, towards like a negative aspects or positive aspects. And then accordingly, the CN making process is followed. So uh, this was a previous like concept on the RAM and now uh, like which standards, international standards we can refer for approach or methodology. There are basically uh, other books, handbooks are also available. Uh, so those we are not referring. However, the BS standard 4778, which is a quality vocabulary, availability, reliability, and maintainability terms, guide to concepts and related definitions. Then ISO 14224, which is normally related to the data, reliability data, maintenance data, and how the equipment hierarchy is built for any CMS system, or our CMS system can be used for uh, acquiring mean time between failures data. Then BS5760, which is the liability of systems, equipment, and components. Then BSEN61703, which is basically mathematical expressions for liability, availability, maintainability, and maintenance support items. Then URIDA, which is normally we are using as a main base to getting all that. MTBF or liability data. The system uh, liability theory models and statistical methods, uh, there's a book which can also be, or a paper which can also be used. Uh, generally, RAM is analysis is done uh, basically by using any uh, professionally available software. This could be a whale RAM, which is velocity software. Then there's also DNVs, uh, basically uh, Maro software. And then there's also isograph and other softwares are also available and it's uh, up to the users which software they wish to follow and use. But uh, like accurate data, proper RBD, proper modeling, proper brainstorming sessions make the study more effective. So now a little bit uh, introduction of the, these standards, like uh, like what it, these standards contains, like overview of BS4778, few standards I'm covering here to make you familiar, like uh, if you go to these standards, like what kind of information you can get and refer in these standards. The quality, uh, vocabulary, availability, and liability and maintainability terms are given here. And as a normal, if we wish to see the index list. So this is the standard title, is a part three I'm referring here. And then this is the index, where they're saying, fundamental concepts, item related performance, defects, failures, and so on. So this data can be used as we go into the process. So since uh, most of our audience are in the learner phase or maybe the students from the university, so they can take help, but people who are from the experience background, uh, they may also be having like a more uh, robust kind of references from these references. So. Abbreviations which are used in like uh, various, like uh, from American standard to the European standard, there could be a little bit uh, definition differences, but overall concept would remain same. So I'm just, it, these abbreviations will help when uh, my colleague would be presenting you the uh, basically case study. So we are just getting familiar with the terminologies. RAM means liability, availability, maintainability. FMEA is a fault modes and effect analysis. FMC is fault mode effects and crit criticality analysis. 
FT is called tree analysis. MAD, T is the mean accumulated downtime. MAD is the mean administrative delay. MDT is the mean downtime. MLD is the mean logistic delay. MMH is the maintenance man hours. MRT is the mean repair time. MTBF is the mean time between failures, basically saying mean time, operating time between failures. Uh, MTTF is the mean time to failure. MTTR is the mean time to restoration and uh, restoration. Sometimes we call this repair. MUT is the mean time, mean uptime. So reliability definition point of view is the performance, the ability of an item to perform as required functions, as per the required function under given conditions. Availability mean one minus basically probability of failure. Maintainability, this is definition. And ability of an item under conditions of use to be retained in or restored to a state in which it can perform a required function. That basically is called maintainability. Critical failure, a failure which is assessed as likely to result in injury to a person, significant material damage, or other unacceptable consequences are called critical failures. Then corrective maintenance, like maintenance activity which is done once equipment is down or it has been affected by any failure. A like a degradation failure, failure which occurs with passage of time when basically uh, slowly, slowly a failure pattern grow and uh, then occurs. Gradual failure is also same. Uh, a failure due to gradual change with the time of given characteristic of an item. Maintenance means the actions which are done to repair or restore the equipment into normal or working condition. Then uh, mishandling failure, this could be a failure caused by incorrect handling or lack of care of the items or maybe wrong maintenance activity. Or maintenance activity done by an unskilled person can also call uh, mishandling failure. Or an operator on the plant when plant is running, they may cause the failure due to any of mishandling aspect. Partial failure means uh, instead of full system, some part of the plant may fail. Preventive maintenance is the based on condition monitoring or based on the OEM recommendation, certain maintenance activities are done, uh, which are called time-based or maybe RCM-based or FMECA-based activities. We are condition monitoring followed by the preventive maintenance. There's also a routine activity in the maintenance side. Scheduled maintenance is activities which are CMS system or as for any planned activities which are done either for condition monitoring, like oil checking, vibration measurements, or there could be uh, preventive, like mechanical uh, seal changes or basically change of the spares like bearings or some bolts. Those activities are also called scheduled maintenance activities. Or calibration should also not be forgotten. Unscheduled maintenance means activities which are done based on the any surprise which is coming from the machine and to capture that or cover that, there could be unscheduled maintenance activity as well. Then uh, we'll be covering this a little bit like a index of 14224 in the petroleum, uh, petrochemicals and natural gas industries, collection and exchange of reliability and maintenance data for equipment. So this standard, like there are failure groups, there are failure like uh, codes, and uh, the, how the data of the failure based on the failure modes and type of objects are recorded so as the industry can compare with each other. This is very important like when various oil and gas or power or petrochemical industries are storing their historical data of the uh, plant operations or maintenance, how those failures would be recorded. And at the time you wish to basically benchmark yourself, right, with any other like uh, uh, company. So this is the platform which provide you the standard uh, way of recording failure history or corrective maintenance history of the equipment. Now, this is the title, looks like. And then if I go to index point of view, so here like uh, application, then benefits of RM data, collection and exchange, then equipment boundary, taxonomy and time uh, definition, then recommended data for equipment failures and maintenance, and then of the equipment class attributes, then interpretation and notation of failures and the maintenance parameters, guide to interpretation and calculation of derived reliability calculations, and so on. So if you see this, it is a good standard when uh, you wish to get the basic knowledge how the CMS systems like SAP, or Oracle, or Whale, uh, like we also got our own uh, CMS system, which is called Whale CMS. So these all systems are 
built and how the data is being uh, stored and being compared. So basically, 14224 standard, I, I already explained the content, so I will select skip through. And then application of the standard, which I'm covering now, this international standard, which basically if you see this upstream, then midstream, downstream, and petrochemical. So this standard covers like an upstream oil, upstream oil and gas, which is basically like uh, whether wells, whether drilling facility, whether manifolds, then uh, CPS, like central processing facility, then terminals, pipelines, and floating FLNG as well. The midstream mean LNG, LPG, gas processing, terminal storage, shipping, and pipelines. Downstream mean refineries, gas convergence, energy plants, pipeline terminal, and other plants. Then petrochemical complexes, terminals, and pipelines. So these all basically equipments are covered under this standard. Then time period, this international standard is applicable to data collected during the operation life cycle of the equipment, including installation, startup, operation, maintenance, and modifications. Laboratory testing, manufacturing, and fabrication phases are not specifically addressed in the standard. Many of the principles in the standard can however be used by equipment manufacturer to collect and sensitize, systemize the failure occurring data and they can improve their reliability or they can learn lessons from the failure history of those equipments once being used by the operators or plants. Then like this international standard is intended to for users such as the following. For example, this could be installation, plant facility, owner, operator, company, industry, manufacturers, authorities, consultant, and contract. Limitations through analysis of data, RM parameters can be determined for use in design, operation, and maintenance. This international standard does not provide detailed description of methods for analyzing data. However, it does give recommendation for defining and calculating some of the vital RM liability maintainability parameters and review the purpose and benefit of some of analytical methodologies for which data can be used. Such analytical methodologies and application areas can be found in other international standards as well. Like URIDA is also supporting, or then Exceda data is also there which can also be used. Then exchange like a liability and maintainability data. So various forums are there, like whether uh, is like as I said, uh, ISO 14224 provide a platform where various reliability handbooks or data books are built in, and uh, like URIDA, then uh, Exida, and there are other reliability sources as well, which could be compared with each other, and data could be exchanged. And how the industry average data is being collected, being analyzed, and being presented in these statistical analysis books, which are used in the RAM and other analysis access. So data security and uh, accuracy, like uh, these are the average, average industry data. So the, the option of errors is there and those errors are identified and accordingly uh, decision making process is taken. Yes, uh, it's useful to define a value measure for an amount of reliability data. This can be the case in the joint industry projects where like uh, these aspects are validated and checked. Like uh, many oil companies are investing to collect this data on a central platforms. And so as this information can be used by the industry on widely range. So this is the benefit, like uh, the opportunity to optimize the time of the equipment, then improving in uh, decision making, improvement basically, reduction in catastrophic failures, reduce environmental impacts, more effective benchmarking and trending of performance. Like, one major, I would say, benefit of ISO 14224 is the more effective benchmarking and trend performance. Increase processing and availability, that's indirect benefit if you would be using the same like that. So next would be the case study where we are basically uh, presenting the RAM model for an offshore field, uh, which we have done, and my colleague would be taking. And now if there's some questions, but we can answer now. So there is one question, uh, name the various activities necessary for adopting the RAM concept in a refinery. See, the first thing is, like when we do RAM for a running refinery, uh, you have to collect the PFDs and PNIDs, then we normally uh, prepare RBD, then in RBD, uh, there would be liability data, cost data, space data, those data, as you want to analyze, the data is input on each 
component at subsystem level and then analysis is run and then objective of that ram should be known to you whether you wish to focus on the like uh, bad actors or uh, contributors who are contributing negatively or positively or then if you want to see the like a uh, requirement of the spares and which machine would be requiring more spares or the downtime which machines are uh, contributing more on the downtime and how you can increase the availability of the facility and if the, the same analysis is being done at a new stage then you wish to see that like uh, okay normal crude unit to the hydro treater to the reformers and then to fccu and downward uh, there could be like instead of having bigger capacity refineries uh, there is a concept like they will clients are building one refinery let's say 300000 barrel per day another refinery Rather than a one refinery of five hundred thousand barrel per day, so sizing is also decided by the RAM model. Another question is: Please explain the RAM study outcome in, impact on the capital spare part selection. Also, distinguish difference between insurance spares and two years operating spares, and how RAM study is influencing these spare selection. See, uh, as we will see the case study, like if you got only one train, and the major like uh, machine is there is a compressor. compression system and only one compressor if that compressor goes down this would become an insurance uh, spare insurance machine it means uh, at a new stage you may prefer to have a two compression machines so as a one goes down the other is able to work and sometime ideally there could be three each one working at 50% capacity and similarly in the rotary pumps it is decided that rather than having one pump it's better to have a two pumps so mostly you see standby pumps in the rotary side similarly if a gas pipeline point of view rather than having one gas pipeline you may have a two or how you wish to increase the reliability of that system so these are the fundamental targets in the spare point of view costing point of view downtime point of view uh, ram does provide that help and the example would be present in the next case study there sir then there is a question where the how shall we decide which model i.e. event tree fault tree or reliability block diagram shall be used for ram study see in the across the like industry what we are using we are using rbd concept so fault tree is also applicable but it is difficult to build complete refinery in one block flow diagram so rbd is the best way and that's what we are using and what that's what mostly industry is using the, the difference between rcm and ram uh, the major difference is uh, in ram uh, though we are using mtpf data but whether we are identifying all failure mode separately this is one thing and number two uh, whether focus is on like optimization of the maintenance activities or uh, you have to see other factors so rcm focus is mainly to optimize maintenance activities uh, with reference to uh, schedule with reference to the nature of activity and uh, then there would be subsequent requirement of the spares and manpower whereas in uh, ram analysis same information is fed and then we try to see like where we would be spending more spares where we would be requiring more man hours or liability point of view which Uh, equipment would be playing an active role in terms of production or in terms of cost so these are the two differences so ram uh, is uh, mainly on the analysis point of view and it's in making tool on the overall the like, configuration of the facilities and uh, rcm is mainly focusing on maintenance uh, optimization so uh, there is another question please elaborate on the training Operation and maintenance manual, skilled manpower to operate and maintain an equipment. See, uh, like in any facility, when you the plant is recruiting, uh, whether engineers, technicians, management people, so it is expected that they would be taking trained staff from the competitors, or they would also be having a in-house training program where the due training would be provided, on-job training would be provided to the all level of people. who would be playing their role in their respective departments or sections or equipment so it is a pretty standard mechanism which has to be followed otherwise capital investment could be wasted or it could be a disaster at the plant after investing huge money in building that plant that's it. okay so it concludes my part and now 
I will hand over uh, hand over this platform to Mr. Omer, and uh, he's an experienced liability expert, and he will be giving you the uh, handling the next part of the presentation. Hello, good day to all. So, as my colleague has presented the approach we used in the RAM study, we'll, I will be now presenting you a develop a case study for our previous client, which we did. So it was actually a development of reliability, availability, maintainability models for offshore fields for that client. So the project objectives were to develop a RAM model to analyze both system performance and overall field performance relative to expected targets of client operations. Then as an outcome of this, we had to conduct a production analysis in which we had to uh, find the, calculate the production efficiency, the plant availability and maintenance analysis. Now, this is one of the most important deliverable of a RAM study in which we have to um, calculate or determine the, or analyze the production efficiency, plant availability and maintenance analysis. Based on this, the spare parts utilization and all of those things are carried out. Then we had to do a maintenance analysis and that maintenance analysis had to cover the mobilization frequency, maintenance strategies, spare spend power utilization throughout the life cycle, asset life cycle costing. So this maintenance analysis is, is actually relating to the MTTR, which was explained before. Uh, the MTTR, if you, if you can remember, is it uh, takes into account the different amount of times which is spent from the, from the time the equipment fails to the time the equipment is brought back into operation. So the mobilization frequency of the different resources, maintenance resources, which uh, uh, are mobilized to, in order to repair that, that equipment, the maintenance strategy, which is used, like what is the number of technicians, the number of uh, spare parts to be used, and where would uh, the spare parts be taken from to reduce that mobilization time. Then the, uh, then the different type of technicians, the different type of man, manpower and spares which are utilized toward the asset life cycle or the life cycle of the study. Then, uh, as an uh, the outcome, the main outcome of this study is that we get to improve, we get to know the bad actors uh, which are causing the production uh, unavailability and how to improve the reliability of those equipment. And understand once we understand the interactions of, the, of those equipment, the reliability of the, those equipments to the overall equipment effectiveness or the production availability, then we can, uh, manage those bad actors and then maybe replace them or then or in, introduce redundant uh, equipments in order to uh, increase the increase the production availability next we'll move towards the scope of RAM study the scope uh, included all the equipment that can directly or indirectly impact the oil production performance and it is a general scope for all the RAM study we use the performance analysis will be based on an equipment item level analysis. Failure modes will be defined on equipment level rather than component level. The following failure modes will be examined for applicability. There are four failure modes which we use usually. The first is critical failure mode, which means that when a critical failure happens, uh, there is an immediate uh, failure of the, of the equipment to produce, to produce or to provide production. So we take it as 100% failure during the failure of that item and 100% failure of that uh, equipment to give production during the repair of that item. So, and then we have the degraded, incipient and unknown. Now degraded is actually uh, somewhat lower than critical failure, but if it is not uh, attended, the degraded can become a critical failure and can cause a complete uh, failure of the, of the production. Similarly, an incipient is uh, on a lower level than degraded, but if it, is uh, if, if, if it is left unintended, it could transform into a degraded and then into a critical failure. Uh, we use uh, a standard of a well-renowned company here in uh, UAE. And from that company, what the standard states is that the degraded, incipient and unknown failures for the repair times for those failures, we have to take as zero since we will use an opportunity, opportunistic maintenance strategy for that. What is opportunistic maintenance is that when we are maintaining or when we are repairing uh, an equipment which has failed critically, during that time, we will also start to repair the degraded incipient, all those failures, in order to save the time, in order to save the money, in, in order to save the different cost due to uh, repairing these, these different failure modes in a different time. 
So what we do is actually degrade it incipient and unknown, the production loss, the capacity loss during uh, repairing of these different failure modes is taken as zero. Then there is a different, uh, uh, different percentages. Let's say, for example, the degraded one, it's only as per the standard, the degraded one we have to use 30% failure, uh, failure of the production during uh, during the during our de degraded failure so for critical it's 100 percent during failure and 100 percent during repair 30 percent during failure for degraded and then incipient and unknown we are using its opportunistic maintenance so this was actually uh, I, I spent more time on this because this is something which is important to the study then the model will also include a high level maintenance definition which includes the repair duration shift constraints shift constraints is actually uh, we have to use to uh, see, uh, to uh, take the mobilization time and all all of those things into co into consideration. The mobilization delay, for it's not only for the technicians, it's also for the spares, it's also for the transportation which is being used. If you are using any lifting equipment and we have to bring it, so for also also for a different type of everything which is required during the maintenance of that equipment, we have to use the mobilization delay for those. So maintenance definition for both top site and subsurface repair activities. Now this is a ramp study approach. It's just an overview and we'll then go through the complete approach which we used during um, the ramp study. So what we do is we start with the system breakdown. Now this system breakdown is actually we uh, split the model into different operation modes. Uh, on the PNIDs, we, we mark the different type of equipment, different type of, type of components. That can contribute to failure of uh, failure of the equipment to towards the production production unavailability, and then we uh, analyze the historical failure data. Now, this historical failure data is actually there are some facilities since RAM is mostly carried out during the earlier stages or the field stages. Many companies do not have the actual failure data or historical failure data. We can say. Even if it is carried out in the later part of the study, some companies still doesn't have a, a historical failure data because they do not keep track of all of these things. So what we do is there is the standard which was uh, discussed before, ORIDA, which is a best, indus best industrial practice standard. And then we use uh, the MTTF and MTTR as a reference from those standards. So there are different versions of that ORIDA and uh, we are using those as a reference if we cannot find uh, these reliability and maintainability parameters from the company, the failure rates and all of those. Then after uh, we know the reliability data, then we go towards the maintainability data, which is MTTR, reliability data is MTTF. Then we go towards system modeling. System modeling is actually, we construct a, a reliability block diagram. In that reliability block diagram, we have to model the system as it is uh, provided in the PFDs, PNIDs, all of those. We cannot deviate from that. And then once it is uh, modeled, we insert the reliability parameters which were uh, calculated before, such as mean time to failure, mean time to repair for exponential failures, for viable failures, for different modes, we have to input different uh, parameters. So once we uh, have this with us, then we analyze, we run the model, and then we get the RAM parameters out of the model. Then we have results and reporting, and the reporting format is also attached in this uh, webinar at the end of the presentation. So this is, uh, now we'll go task by task. The first one, the first task uh, in our approach is we start off with a kickoff kick meeting and on-site interviews. Then a walkthrough survey, data collection in which we collect the PNIDs, PFDs, cause and effect charts, trips, failures, production, and other records. Task number two is the development of RBD. Now the development of RBD, as I said before, it is in accordance with the, uh, the different PFDs and PNIDs or single line diagrams using RAM software. Then the task three is to evaluate the current practice, which is uh, we have to see the different failure modes and reliability parameters. The reliability parameters are actually MTTF and MTTR. Mostly we use MTTF and MTTR because uh, even in ORIDA, and uh, the actual data of client, we have the failure modes, failure mode and mean time to repairs, or uh, they use a constant repair time uh, mostly. So we use MTTF and MTTR mostly in our uh, analysis. Also, then we go towards the, um, once, once we get this from client or from ORIDA, we use these parameters to update the RBD. 
uh, with production failures, spare parts, all those maintain maintenance related data we also have to insert. Then a gap analysis is um, carried out. Now this gap analysis is what what it is actually is uh, that we calculate the reliability parameters from uh, the results of failure data modeling or the previous uh, historical data which the client gave us, and then we compare it with uh, actual reliability parameters such as Aurida. So we also do this gap analysis, and then we see if it is matching with uh, if it is matching with the um, Aurida, which is the best industrial practice, or if it is not. If it is matching, then we can go ahead with the study. If it is not matching, we, we recommend the client that we will be using Aurida for this because it, it is uh, like much lower or much higher than that. Because there could be anomalies in the data of the client also. So it is after, done after a workshop with the client and once they are agreed and they present their points, we present our points, then we can go towards with the gap analysis. Then uh, the task number five is to evaluate the reliability and maintainability. Now this is uh, the most, uh, like this is what RAM study is for. Uh, to, to perform this task, we have to first calculate the reliability and maintainability of its equipment. Then it is also it is done in using uh, using the RAM software, or and also it could be done uh, on on our in-house Excel sheets. Then we have uh, we compare the results with generic reliability data source, which is Aurida, to identify if uh, equipment requires more improvement. Then we have to evaluate the availability, which is one of the outputs of our study. So modeling of availability data based on field collected data or client provided data to determine the current operation process is meeting the expected performance requirements. Then we have to evaluate all the contribution to unavailability of all equipment to determine the process with the highest impact. So if um, there are more failures in an equipment and it is causing more uh, facility shutdowns, it will cause more un unavailability of that uh, facility to the production. So uh, we have to we have to uh, determine the process with highest highest impact. Then this uh, is a visual representation of what goes in and what goes out. Uh, PFDs, PNIDs, design bases. Uh, then we use we we construct the reliability block diagrams, the reliability data, reservoir profiles, the production flow. Uh, actually, the reservoir profiles are the different production data we get from the client. Uh, during the life cycle, what will be their production, their estimated production from the start till end of the life cycle, the maintenance strategy. Then this is the input for the RAM study. Then the output, two of the outputs we get out of the RAM study is one is production efficiency. The other one is equipment, equipment criticality. This is one of the, um, you can say, um, most important, most important outcomes of this RAM study because this lets us know which equipment is more critical to the operation, which equipment is causing more outages, more um, production losses to the, uh, to the process. Then we have uh, the software which we use for the RAM study. It has extensive features for modeling networks, maintenance operations and demand scenarios that allow users to make right decision for maximum return on investment. Following aspects are covered under RAM software. The first is equipment reliability and redundancy, production summary, critical systems and its breakdowns, outage details and maintenance strategies. So now we will move uh, with the actual, what we did during that study, the parameters that, that, that were uh, used in the RAM modeling, in the RAM study, RAM analysis of, for that facility. So what we did was uh, first, we have to make, a, make an assumption register. In that assumption register, we have to uh, get the system live, the, the number of simulations we will be running. So this is just a, a summary of what the initial initial inputs are when you when doing this uh, the RAM study. So the system life for that study was for that uh, RAM study was 25 years given by the client. Gross production design capacity was 60,000 barrels per day. The number of simulations were 100 as per the Monte Carlo uh, assumption simula simulation assumption. Then we have the primary product as oil secondary product as gas and tertiary product as water. The next slide will give us a screen, screenshots of these inputs in the simulator parameters. Now this simulation parameter uh, screen is what 
is the first thing to we have to we have to add in order to start start the ram ram analysis. So in this we can see that the system life is taken as 25. The start date is taken and the end date will be uh, the software calculates based on the reservoir data we add. Then we have the design capacity, number of simulations, and the model settings which will be applicable throughout the uh, the model. The failure data will be expressed in years. It's mostly expressed in years. And the repair data is expressed in hours, mostly the MTTR. Then we have the description of primary, secondary, tertiary products. This is a, a, an overview of branch level configuration of that field of that project. We have um, uh, given a screenshot for this uh, for this study. Next, we have the oil production capacities, and this is uh, actually this this these are given by the client, and then these are added to to know the production efficiency one. And then also to gather the results of like, for example, how much production will there be in this, in, in this, let's say 25 system life, 25 years of system life. So it, it, the, at the end of the study, we get the production, which will be given to, uh, which will be analyzed that during this period, 25 years, if the production is this and the losses are this much, can we afford another equipment, another, uh, another modification? If their losses are high, if there is lower efficiency, so it it all all gives us some information in one way or another. Then we have gas production capacity, so field day in million certain cubic feet per day. Then we have water production cap capacities. It's it's if you can see, it's throughout the life cycle. It starts from 2007, the first of January, and then goes towards 2031. Then, uh, as I was mentioning uh, before we have to create uh, an assumption register for this study. And then that assumption register is first approved by the client and then we go towards the modeling of that um, um, that model. So what, what our assumption register comprises of is we start with that the system life will be taken as 25 years. It is taken from design basis or, uh, of, of, of that facility. Then we, uh, the, then the oil capacity in this in this case we have field a contains 12 platforms out of 12 two platforms are for venting purposes seven platforms have production well heads while two platforms have gas lift compression facility two platforms are used for utilities scrubbing and oil transportation capacity of oil production from these platforms for field a has been taken as 60000 barrels per day for each year starting from 2010 to 2007 to 2031 well head wise and string wise capacities have been manipulated through average production history and forecast production. For the gap, gas capacity, we have total gas production from all platforms is compressed at two platforms named and rest of the gas is vented. The compressed gas is used for gas lift purposes. So these are the different type of assumptions we are using for oil capacity and gas capacity. For the production demands, forecast production for oil and gas has been used in RAM model as provided by the client. The well heads are also considered parallel to each other within with 100% activity, and number of simulations are taken to be as 100, as a standard Monte Carlo approach. Then these are some of the equipments we, uh, which we used in the RAM study, air compression system, gas lift, compression system, like coal regeneration system and all those. The effect of HP separator and HHP separator is, get, is kept at zero percent capacity loss at failure repair because due to low wellhead pressure, these separators are not further in use. All the main equipment have been considered which are critical and may cause failure slash shutdown of the unit or may cause direct indirect impact on the production efficiency. For the detail and parallel activities of the equipment, please refer to platform wise asset register and analysis basis of each platform. These were some of the instrumentations used during the study, then components used for the study and the assumptions, well heads, valves, example, sub uh, surface controlled, subsurface valves, safety shutdown valve, choke valves have been considered parallel and series in double string well heads with 100% activity. The reliability data, uh, as uh, we have mentioned before, there were two models for each uh, platform. Now one model was uh, made with reliability data of each equipment from Aurora 2015, which is a, uh, and then reliability data was calculated for each equipment using the actual failure and repair data, which was uh, received from client. So some of the formulas are also given uh, when, when we receive the data from client, how we calculate the MTTF. 
So uh, for MTTF, the formula is last failure date minus first failure date over number of failures by 365, which is uh, the number of days in a year. Then the mean time to uh, repair the average of actual finish date minus work start date for all failures. So uh, these are some of the assumptions for selection of work finish date, where actual finish date is lesser than work start date, then work order close date has been considered. Where actual finish date is more than work order close date, then work order close date has been considered. Failure modes and percentage capacity loss. So now, as mentioned before, as uh, uh, there are four different failure modes which we take. It's actually the three top that we take actually uh, mostly. The one is critical, degraded, and incipient. So for the uh, critical, we have 100% capacity loss on failure and repair for critical mode. For degraded, we have 30% capacity loss on failure and it's 0% capacity loss and repair. Uh, before in this study, since this was done uh, a while back, we have, we have taken 100% capacity loss. After the standard, we have uh, the new standard, we have used 0% capacity loss for degraded, incipient, and unknown. Then for flaring, there is no flaring operation on field A and equipment not included. The equipment failure of which do not affect production directly or indirectly. Example of your chemical injection systems, technology. And it's your open and closed drain systems. Certain wells in the pipeline reception have not been included in RAND study. Now, this is uh, in the assumption table. We have some maintenance profile for critical equipment. As I was um, discuss as we were discussing before, that there is a maintenance profile which uses maintenance resources. Maintenance resources could be the manpower employed to maintain the equipment. Now that manpower. Uh, as an example, in this we have in this uh, slide we are showing that for gas lift compressor, for a critical failure, we have to employ a supervisor for mechanical maintenance, two technicians and two helpers. Similarly, if there is a, a, a electrical or instrumentation control maintenance needed, then the, uh, the, there are no supervisors technicians required for this because uh, it was provided by the client at that time. Then the total crew for for this for this particular activity was five. The number of spares required were two, and the accessories uh, needed for those for this for this failure was screen. This is a screenshot screenshot of a reliability block diagram for uh, for that for that uh, model. So this is for a third stage gas lift compressor, and this this is how a reliability block diagram looks when uh, before being populated by the library data. Then we have a comparison of MTTF and MTTR, which we do. This is actually between the actual data provided by the client and the ORIDA data, which is uh, taken from reference. So for this, uh, as an example for pump, you can see crude oil transfer pump. Uh, we have critical data as uh, critical MTTF data as 2.4 years per failure, but the one provided by the client, it it, it ranges from 0 0.5 to uh, 0 0.7. So there was a, a discrepancy in the data and then we discussed with the client to know if, if uh, uh, what can be the reason and if after discussion it could be uh, like or data can be used or the actual data could be used. Then also we perform the site visit. These are some of the findings, observations from the site visit. Uh, the first is that unavailability of online vibration monitoring system for gas lift compressor in platform C. The consequences of this uh, of this is that it causes vibrations to go unnoticed and seriously affect the machine health. The suggestions were given to install online vibration monitoring system on urgent basis. Then there was also finding non-conforming material is used. The consequence is that the non-conforming material parts are likely to be corroded easily and a suggestion was given to use a conforming material. Then uh, fire and gas layout is not developed in HMI screens to show the exact location of alarm and fire and gas system and a log card and digital, digital output card is not redundant which may bypass on layout protection. Then the consequences of this is that the operator cannot track the fire alarm for the location in case of urgency. Suggestions were given like to develop fire and gas detection layout in HMI fire and gas system and a low card and digital output card should be configured in redundancy. Once we ran the model after in, uh, adding all the reliability data, after uh, constructing the reliability block diagram, we ran the model. 
we, and then uh, these are the uh, effect of the uh, the output of those analysis so this is a graph which we get from the from as a result of ram analysis from the software so according to the simulation results the average production efficiency of field a is 94.579 percent the average volume produced over a simulated period of 25 years which is the life cycles is 47.94 million barrels approximately the production and this this uh, this production is calculated from the reservoir flow data or the production flow data which was presented before the production is 3.17 million barrels in year 2007 which declined to six six fifty five thousand barrels at the end of simulation cycle in year 2031 the average loss over life is 2.69 million barrels averaging at 107,000 barrels per year the above statistics show how show the platform is losing about 107.107,000 barrels each year similarly we uh, calculate the system uh, subsystem wise main loss or availability contribu contributions so for for this uh, particular facility the oil export system in the platform l is the highest contributor of criticality with a contribution of 30.62% similarly gas engine system in the platform j is the second highest contributor of criticality with a contribution of 16.95% now if we dive uh, deeper into the subsystem wise criticalities we go into the component wise the components which uh, uh, which make the the system so for the highest uh, for the highest subsystem when we drill down these were the uh, criticality contributors for that system so the gas engine generator was the highest contributor of criticality with a contribute with the criticality contribution of 7.86 percent test separator is the second high, highest contributor of criticality with a contribution of 6.02 percent and actuated ball well is the third highest contributor contributor of criticality with a contribution of 4.22 percent so this is actually um, this graph actually tells us which is the most critical and critical to the production availability so uh, when we when we provide the client with these results we give recommendations based on the criticality that this system is the most critical and it is recommended uh, before providing the recommendation we uh, do a self test let's uh, we we make different cases that if we have uh, two let's say two components of the same uh, criti uh, same equipment or two different equipment in uh, who are redundant in parallel to each other what will be the effect of on production availability for that equipment or if we can use a better reliability data uh, what will be the effect on the final production due to using uh, reliability data uh, a better reliability data so we we produce different cases case one two three four and then we give based on those cases recommendation to the client similarly uh, after after the criticality we also have a performance signature curve now this signature curve tell, tells us with the probability that within this percent our production efficiency would be between this range or greater than or equal to this range let's uh, for example in this study uh, 90 percent probability that the production efficiency would be equal to or less than 94.78 percent but more than 94.21 percent 10 percent probability that production efficiency would be less than 92.34 percent but more than 94.217 percent this is the average efficiency curve in this curve we can see that the uh, this is the reason why we use 100 simulation as you can see during the first 10 simulations the result for the efficiency it varies largely as we increase the number of cycles the number of simulations the uh, the average efficiency levels out or it becomes smooth so we get a more reliable and more accurate result this is uh, the q utilization graph this uh, is this is what we get after adding all those maintenance resources data the man hours which were used by the different crew me me mechanical maintenance crew electrical and instrumentation control crew all of those next we have next we have q scale utilization graph for this, the potential man hours, uh, if you can see the potential man hours of each crew is 140,000 uh, during the system life of 32 years. 
assuming 12 hours a day, resulting in potential man hours per year for each career to be 4.38 thousand years hours per year. Then we have, uh, this is the result of field aid and study. And this was actually the conjecture of spares which were given to us as an, uh, as an input. And then as uh, this is what we enter for the maintenance resources uh, data. As for an example, let's say for compressor spare, there were 10 in stock, then days leading to restock low, 20 days, days leading to restock high, 30 days, restock level four, that e after each time, we, we provide a time that after each time it will be restocked. And uh, this will be the, like four spares would be added in the warehouse. Reorder number six, total use 650, no, number of restocks. So this is uh, what we had four, uh, the consumption of spares filled in the RAM, RAM study. Then this is a, a overall executive summary. You can say the screenshot of executive summary. The system is comprised of seven source branches, which contribute an average of 6.7 million uh, barrels. Then we have different production profile graphs, the production volumes from different platforms. Uh, if you could, if you uh, can remember that in the start we have given uh, we have presented a screenshot of the overall overall uh, facility diagram so it is this production volumes is based on that uh, based on that uh, uh, facilities then we have oil gas and water profile these three were the different products for primary secondary and tertiary products that we were using and using the reservoir profile data for those then we have the criticality breakdown which it was presented before the subsystem criticality, the component level criticality, and then we need to uh, see the mean failures against each, equip uh, each, each equipment, each system that, that also can be seen. So, and all of these are actually everything we, we get from here are taken for in the final RAM report that we issue to the cloud uh, client. The average number of outages per year was 0.73 with an average duration of 5.87 hours. The longest outage lasted 35 hours and the shortest 0.022. So you can see that we can also get an outage data as a result of this RAM study. The, this as a summary, if we, if we present the, the average production efficiency of field A is found to be 94.967%. The overall availability of field A is found to be 99.962%, which is good. Gas engine system in platform J is found to be the highest contributor of criticality on subsystem level with a contribution of 18.39%, followed by gas lift compressor system in platform J with 17.34% contribution and oil export system in platform J with 15.37% contribution. The platform J had these equipment which was uh, contributing mostly to the criticality of the complete, complete process. This, then we have gas engine generator is found to be the highest contributor of criticality on component level with a contribution of 8.92%, followed by test separator with 6.68% and gas engine with 3.28%. Now this criticality contribution is taken for uh, for this the first the first uh, gas engine system which had the most criticality, 18.39%. The average number of outage per year is found to be 0.62 hours with an average duration of 5.62 uh, with an average duration of 5.365 hours. Now, uh, as, as mentioned earlier, there were different case studies which we make and then based on the case studies, we recommend uh, the client the solution. So the case study one is that assuming an extra gas lift compressor, along with existing gas lift, gas lift compressor in platform J with an operational configuration of one operating and another standby. So if we can see here, the gas lift compressor system, it is having 17.34% criticality. So if we can give an extra uh, gas lift compressor, since it, it is the second most highest contributor, it will improve the average production efficiency of field A from 94.967 to 96.322%. Similarly, for a case study two, we assume that all of the gas lift compressor in platform C operate without any standby mode. Currently, because uh, they were having three to 50% configuration. So we can, uh, so the purpose was to uh, analyze what will be the effect on the production efficiency. And if there is a minimal effect or no effect, uh, there won't be any need 
for to have three in three compressors running at 50 percent configuration so when we uh, did this uh, case study the average production efficiency of field a was found to be slightly decreased from 94.967 to 94.935 percent so all of these case studies are uh, then provided to the cloud, uh, client with the with the different with, with the different uh, sections then assuming both the crowd oil transfer pumps in platform l operate without any standby mode it's against current 200% configuration average production efficiency of field a in this case was to be uh, found to be slightly decreased from 94.967 to 94.919%. Then the last case study was assuming all of the crude oil transfer pumps in platform F operate without any standby mode. Again, again it was operating under 3 to 50% configuration, and the produ production efficiency was found to be slightly decreased, not much effect. Then there are some general suggestions based on the case studies. These are the final recommendations that we give to the client that gas lift compressor in platform J configured in parallel with the standby gas lift compressor. It was proposed to the client since we had around a 2%, uh, if we can see a 2% increase in efficiency while using this, uh, while having gas lift compressor, compressor as a standby. Then gas lift compressors A, B, C in platform C are configured in 30, 30 to 50% mode. It is in current configuration. Then crude oil, then crude oil transfer pumps A and B in platform L configured in two into hundred percent mode. Crude oil transfer pumps A, B, and C in platform F configured in three into fifty percent mode. In order to meet maximum production levels, following measures are recommended. The number of failures and corresponding MTTR should be considered for improvement by improving the preventive maintenance routines. The ratio of preventive maintenance to corrective maintenance should be in favor of preventive maintenance. Ideally. Corrective maintenance to preventive maintenance ratio should be 20 to 80 percent. The failure rate and repair time for gas lift compressors at plat platform C should be considered for improvement as they are main contributor of unavail unavailability for complex A. The value, the value of MTTR for the gas lift compressor and cruise transfer pumps is bigger than the ORIDA data, but it can be re reduced by ensuring on-time identification of failure and mobilization of maintenance crew as, a, as well as availability of spare parts. Spare parts for all levels of maintenance should be present, all wear and tear as well as spare parts for overhauling the main equipment, especially for gas lift compressors, crude oil transfer pumps should be available on demand. The actual failure and repair data record, recording should be improved. It is recommended to update data registration methods in accordance with the ISO 14224. Velocity recommends timely identification of failures and fast mobilization of maintenance personnel to reduce mean time to repair. This is uh, a sample of the technical report which we uh, submit to the client. The table of content of that report is the introduction, the description of the field, process system complex, different uh, utility systems, the process systems of those complexes, then we have the objectives of the RAM study, the scope of the RAM study, and executive summary, which we get from the uh, RAM software, the production efficiencies and all the uh, production availability figures we get, and the associated graphs. RAM model description. In the RAM model description, we give the asset details analysis basis, the methodology, simulation, uh, simulation technique, the basic formula used, uh, in the RAM analysis, the failure data, which we used against it, each equipment and component, uh, mean time to failure data, which is a reliability parameter, mean time to repair data, which is maintainability parameter, and then the actual data provided by the client. Then the results are uh, based on, uh, like it is based on different parameters. One of them is also system criticality contributors. And based on this criticality contributors, we also run different cases. To, in order to determine the effect on production efficiency of uh, most critical equipment. Then we have the observations and recommendations uh, which we give based on this different results we run. And then there are references to uh, up to all the executive summary, production summary also provided in the uh, report as a detailed detailed, uh, detailed appendix. So uh, for any questions or not, so you can, you can ask us. Your questions are there already. Yes. You have to read the question we will answer. You can read the question. A little louder. Yes. Okay. One question is uh, in the case study, why use MTTF instead of MTBF? See, the question of MTTF 
and MTV, MTVF is more or less same, basically, right? Is the only thing is in MTTF, the mean time to repair is being added, I think there's a difference between here. Like MT, MTBF is a normal one over lambda, right? Whereas MTTF is, there's a sum of the mean MTTR as well. Okay, next question. RAM study is a part of the sign stage, DBSP and project proposal deliverables. How do we identify the bad factors at the design stage? At the design stage, uh, the more focus is on the uh, basically uh, production continuity for future. So whether one equipment or redundant equipment is required, whether one train or second train is required, and then like what kind of uh, reliable system we wish to have at design stage. So bad actors would not be the focus at EPC stage or design stage. Next question. Shall client ask engineering contractor to revisit RAM study outcome and its impact in detailed engineering phase and on the issuance of equipment purchase orders? Generally, no. Uh, RAM is generally done at feed stage because after feed, the number of trains, the kind of redundancy is fixed and EPC is mostly doing detail engineering and procurement process. Otherwise, if EPC would be doing RAM analysis at EPC stage, there would be huge cost impact and a lot of variations. At, at that stage, the owner would not have a right to renegotiate the price. So the general, generally, ideally, RAM study is done at a part of the concept and feed stage or at operation phase when you wish to optimize the maintenance the activities. There is a modification. Oh, there is a modification, yes. Okay, next question. How does different failure patterns affect the RAM study and how will it be considered in RBD development? See, RBD is uh, built based on the PFDs and PNIDs of the plant as per the actual configuration. So it does not uh, carry any uh, type of analysis. Second is what kind of failure data is available, whether the failure pattern is can be managed by uh, variable analysis or we have to go by exponential or other pattern, but generally uh, we go by variable analysis. Okay, next question. If the focus on the human resource is important in the first step to develop a RAM and how? See, if there's experienced and trained uh, engineers are working on development of RBD and input data and they have a, a full knowledge of how to operate the software, what kind of input data, what are the sensitivities of the software, then they would be able to get the reliable result. So it means the experienced and trained staff is compulsory to understand RAM theory as well as the RAM analysis software. Next question, for the gas compression and its co uh, connecting pipelines, shall we consider and include surge analysis of pipelines in RAM block diagram? See, surge analysis is a separate part. There is a part of your mechanical and process design and uh, that is relevant to like how you will uh, control the abnormality coming up in the system. And in RAM analysis, the issues like uh, it is, uh, well understood that the plant has been designed properly, process, mechanical, electrical, instrumentation compliance is there with international standard and practices. And on top of that, then reliability factors are modeled and analyzed. And the search goes to the basic engineering concept. So basic engineering or detail engineering related issues are not attended by them as such. Only reliability related issues are basically modeled and analyzed or costing related issues are uh, and modeled and analyzed two things like maintenance, spares, cost, production, and reliability. Next question. Is it correct to say RAM can be applied to any type of, type of production facility where man and machines are used and not only in energy business? Yeah, anywhere it can be used. Yes. Next question. Why the failure modes not studies at component level? Can you explain that? See, it can be done, but generally, like how much energy would be spent on that analysis. So you can do a lot of detailed analysis, but it will require more man hours. Okay. RAM is limited to rotating equipment only or also applicable to static equipment? It covers all equipment uh, installed in that particular facility, irrespective static, rotating, electrical, instrumentation, or set. All equipment can be modeled. Okay, next question. What if the plant or facility is new and no failure data is available? How does MTTF or MTBF will be decided and used for RAM study? In general, we are using data from ORIDA. 
and exceed the, so that uh, industry average data is used for at that stage of the analysis. Okay. Next question. In RAM study of field, which references are taken for the assumptions? See, when we are doing any RAM analysis, whether production data, the kind of uh, equipment being used for that particular facility, so it, all data has to be taken from the design basic document of that particular field and actual production data, actual uh, plant maintenance records, the reliability data uh, is taken from the CMS and associated documentation. Next question. How, the, how do flex oil filter availability 100% or two by 100% contributes to failures? See, if you like, it, it could be modeled like a one time, you will add one filter and you will see the reliability of the system. And second time you will make two filter uh, both in parallel. So in that scenario, one out of two hundred percent redundancy would be available, and that will contribute positively in the reliability of the facility. Okay. Next question. Yes, in the efficiency of the field. Can read that here. What could be the reasons for the efficiency efficiency decrease of fields after RAM studies? No, no, uh, RAM is not decreasing the efficiency. RAM is just reporting the efficiency, whatever the actual uh, like a situation of the facility is, or based on the previous trend and if there could be future forecast that is based on the behavior of the machines like what efficiencies you would be achieving ram is just calculating it ram is not reducing it next question at what stage in the life cycle of the oil well do you run a ram analysis so it's up to operators at what stage you wish to do one generally it's done at the at, as i said earlier at conceptual and feed stage and secondly at a mature age if you wish to optimize your uh, machinery behavior and uh, their contribution towards efficiency and availability of the facilities at that stage you can run and uh, this is what being done okay. next question ram study will affect it to affect a plan how TA plan yeah a mm -hmm. TA plan how how we can confirm the effectiveness effectiveness of ram study during handover from commissioning phase to operation phase see uh, at this stage ram is not being done ram is done at feed stage as I said earlier, when you are designing the facility, whether you wish to have uh, only one equipment or redundant or standby equipment, whether you want to have one train or two trains, and then if you wish to identify which could be the bottlenecks in future at design stage, but at uh, when plant is built, a pre-commissioned and commissioned and handing, handing over to uh, operators to operate the plant at that time, RAM study is not required to be done because RAM is not helping in the, at that kind, that phase of the project. Next question. Can we increase the redundancy to overcome the reliability system? Any formula to know how many equipment slash systems redundantly is needed to be effectively reliable? So those, those are the basic, basically uh, the contribution of RAM. You can always add redundant equipment and you can see the efficiency and availability of the plant, but it will correlate with the cost. If you will be adding more uh, redundant equipment, it will require more cost and more space and more time. So it has to be like a equilibrium between what you need to build and uh, what you can build. Next question. In running your RAM analysis, you made certain assumptions. What are the assumptions based on? What if, you're, what if you make wrong assumptions? What happens to the whole case study? See, scenario point of view, see production, consumption of spares, manpower required, the kind of PM activity, the data regarding MTBF. So the one thing is very clear, the assumptions correlate the basis for your study and those should be as accurate as those, those could be. If there would be some wrong assumption, garbage in, garbage out. It means the wrong assumption will lead to the wrong study. Okay. Next question, can we convert a model built in Maros to Miriam? See, uh, no, no, like a model has to be remodeled, but the softwares are not compatible. Like you cannot bring Maro's data to Mariam or to Isograph or Isograph vice versa. So each model has to be built separate. So it's okay, it concludes uh, our discussion and uh, we look forward to uh, meeting you next webinar in between. If you have any questions, you can send to our web page and uh, we'll try to answer you. It's always a pleasure uh, to interacting with all of you. It was a good attendance by all the participants. And uh, we say bye-bye now and look forward to our next webinar on another Sunday. Thank you. Thank you.